Welcome to the Ruckus Associate Smart Zone Administrator demonstration series for the Smart Zone OS 5 release. Smart Zone OS 5 is the network controller operating system that's available on the Smart Zone 100 and Smart Zone 300 hardware platforms, and as we'll be discussing here, the virtual Smart Zone network controller. This presentation describes portal authentication using Web Authentication WLANs on a Smart Zone network controller running Smart Zone OS 5. What authentication portals do is they present a login prompt to the user. So here's how they operate. So a user will join the WLAN. Then the user will be challenged to provide either user credentials or a valid passcode. Once the user enters the details, which are then passed to the server for verification, if the user has a valid account or a guest passcode, they're allowed to continue. Pretty simple, right? So let's take a look at how this is set up. So here I am, I have a smart zone high scale, a virtual smart zone edition. And to configure this, we're gonna go over to services and profiles. And under services and profiles, once this populates, we want hotspots and portals. It's the first one, so it populates pretty quickly for us. We wanna to go to the web auth tab up here. This is the web authentication. And we, if we're logged in under a certain domain account, which I am here, I'm not on the system domain, I'm logged in to a partner domain account, You'll need to select that partner domain and the team domain and the zone you want to create this web authentication service on. So once we're down to our zone, we'll go up here and we'll click the Create button. Okay, to set this up, first thing we can do is give this a name. So we'll give it a portal name. We'll just call this the Web Auth Portal, just to keep it simple for the demonstration here. So now that we've given it a name, uh, there's only one other requirement in this general options section, and that's for you to select a language. Uh, we're gonna keep the language as English for this demonstration, but as you can see here, we have several languages available that you can choose from for the way this is going to display when the user connects to the web authentication portal. Now, the redirection screen here, uh, this is useful because we can have the user, uh, when the user connects to the wireless network, um, they're going to be brought to a web page that's going to ask them to provide their authentication, their credentials. After they've authenticated, if they can successfully authenticate, we can redirect them to wherever they were going, uh, maybe their browser's homepage or something like that, or we can redirect them to a specific URL. So once we've done that, uh, this is common in some locations where they might take you to their website or something like that. We could do this and provide a website. So we could redirect them to ruckuswireless.com. So that's one of the options we'd have available to us where we can let them continue going where they're going or we can redirect them to a URL of our choosing. Now in the user session section, we've got a couple of options. We've got the session timeout, which tells us how long a session can remain valid until the user must reauthenticate. So we can set a timer that says at a certain time, the user is going to have to reauthenticate with us. And that's where it might be a good idea to redirect them back to the URL they were visiting instead of forcing them over to ruckuswireless.com from where they were when a session expires. We also have a grace period, which is how long we'll allow that client to be idle uh, before we'll make them authenticate again. So we we'll, can deauthenticate them at this period if they've been idle for this period of time. So they'd have to reauthenticate if they wanted to continue using the wireless LAN. We'll leave those at default and we'll say OK here. So now that that's done, we're going to have to create a wireless LAN or modify an existing wireless LAN. But for the demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and create a new wireless LAN over here. So we go to the wireless LAN section. Uh, again, I'm in a partner domain, so I can only create that wireless LAN within my partner domain. So I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm going to create a new wireless LAN. So a couple things we have to provide here. We have to provide a name, an SSID, uh, and all the options that are shown here with the orange asterisk next to them. We're going to have to provide the information. Uh, just for the sake of this demonstration, we'll keep this easy. Uh, we'll just give this the uh, name Web Auth, and that will be the SSID. Once I click down here, it'll autom automatically populate for me. Uh, the zone is in the zone we're created. I only have one AP in my lab, and it is in a particular WLAN group, so uh, associated with the WLAN group. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and put it in this WLAN group that's associated with the AP group that my AP is a member of. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. 
And what we need to do for web authentication in these authentication options over here is we need to set this up as a web authentication WLAN. So we click that box here. Uh, we'll leave the method as open. You'll see that all of the other methods are grayed out. So the only thing to have for this is open. Uh, the encryption options, we're going to leave it none to make this easy for our demonstration here. But what we have to do is we have to set up the authentication functionality. So that's done right down here in the authentication and accounting services. Uh, so we've got the web authentication portal. So we're using the portal we created earlier called web op portal. So that's in this list here. And because it's the only one, it automatically populated for us. Uh, then we want to use an authentication service. Now, I already have an authentication service set up using RADIUS, where I use the controller as the proxy uh, for that RADIUS authentication. So I'm going to toggle this switch to set up the smart zone network controller as the proxy uh, for RADIUS authentication. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the profile I have for the proxy server. So I have the core AAA proxy profile set up that points to a specific AAA server that has credentials for the user we're going to use uh, to authenticate through our web portal in the example from my web browser on a PC I have here in my lab environment. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and say OK, and we are ready to go with this WLAN. OK, so here I have a PC that is in the vicinity of the access point that's broadcasting this wireless LAN that we just created. So let's go ahead and connect to it over here. So it was named WebAuth, so here it is right here. We see it being advertised. We click Connect, and what's going to happen here is it's going to connect, and it's going to bring up my default browser. And in that default browser, it is going to uh, first show me a, a message that says I don't have a certificate installed on my smart zone here, and that this doesn't match, but that's OK. We can go ahead and proceed to it. And what it'll take us to is the controller's authentication page. So I'm going to put in the credentials I have here that I know are on my Radius server. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And log in. And what that's going to do is automatically, you notice, redirect me to the www.ruckuswireless.com site. So I was redirected to this site, but I have whatever uh, access to the internet or anything else that uh, is allowed to me by the network itself. So, you know, I can show you that by going over here and just changing this to. to support.ruckuswireless.com, and of course we came to the support page. So we can get out to the internet through this wireless network that we had to use web authentication for to be able to allow ourselves to have access out to the internet over this network. And that web authentication was provided to us uh, through the default browser on the PC um, by a portal that we created on the Smart Zone Network Controller that says any user that connects to this network must first authenticate through a web interface, uh, allowing them to get out to anything else in the network. So this concludes the presentation on portal authentication using web authentication WLANs on the Smart Zone Network Controller running Smart Zone OS 5. There are many other demonstrations available detailing configuration processes and options on Smart Zone OS 5. So I hope to see you back for more presentations in the future. Thank you.